Mutation number eight, pain insensitivity. Let's say the world ends and you step on a rusty nail. Most people scream, limp, or cry a little. You? You calmly pull it out and keep walking. Turns out your chill might actually come from a broken pain signal. Researchers have identified mutations in a gene called SCN9A that literally dull the body's ability to feel pain. This gene controls how pain signals move through your nervous system, and certain rare variants interrupt that process. The result? Pain doesn't land the same way. It's not that you don't take damage, you just don't register it like everyone else. And we're not talking about high pain tolerance. People with this mutation can suffer major injuries without flinching. One girl in the UK broke her arm, kept playing on the playground, and only went to the hospital when it started dangling weirdly. Only a tiny fraction of people, fewer than one in a million, carry the full SCN9A mutation that erases pain. But milder versions that reduce pain sensitivity more subtly are believed to exist in much broader groups. In an apocalypse scenario, this would be a superpower. Pain slows people down. It causes panic, hesitation, and shock. But with SCN9A on your side, you'd have a biologically muted alarm system, one that lets you move, react, and survive without being paralyzed by pain. You're not fearless. Your body just doesn't make a fuss about it. Mutation number seven, warrior gene. Picture the apocalypse. Sirens are blaring, buildings are on fire, people are screaming, and there you are. Breathing steady, eyes scanning and heart rate barely rising. Not because you're fearless, but because your brain knows how to chill. This rare advantage might come from a version of the COMP gene, often called the warrior variant. COMP is in charge of clearing out stress chemicals like dopamine and adrenaline. If you've got the high activity version, your brain flushes those stress signals faster, meaning you're incredibly calm under pressure and you bounce back from chaos in record time. Roughly one in four people have this fast flushing version. The rest, they get stuck in stress longer, overthinking or freezing when the pressure spikes. In prehistoric times, this mutation could have meant the difference between action and extinction. You needed someone to make decisions when everyone else was screaming, someone to lead, move, or fight. That kind of calm wasn't about bravery. It was biology doing damage control and fast. And today, it's the kind of wiring that keeps people cool in car accidents, combat zones, or corporate disasters. When the world's going sideways, your brain just clicks into gear. You're not immune to stress, you're just built to process it faster than most. Mutation number six, viral resistance. A deadly virus hits. People drop like flies. Streets are empty. Hospitals overflow and somehow, you're fine. You could say you're lucky, but there's a very good chance it's because your cells never open the door. That might be thanks to a rare genetic mutation called CCR5 Delta 32. It alters a specific receptor on the surface of your immune cells, the one many viruses use to sneak inside. It's like removing the doorknob to your house when your mother-in-law comes over. The most famous example? HIV. People who carry two copies of the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation are functionally immune to HIV, even with repeated exposure. Scientists think this mutation first became common in Europe after devastating outbreaks of smallpox or the Black Death, where having this immunity may have meant the difference between life and death. Today, around 1% of people of European ancestry carry two copies. Up to 15% carry one, which may still offer some protection. In an apocalypse filled with fast-spreading, weaponized, or unpredictable viruses, this mutation is like a genetic firewall. It doesn't cure anything, but it just slams the door shut before the virus even knocks. While others isolate, you walk straight through the storm. Mutation number five, fast blood clotting. You get sliced, deep, the kind of injury that usually sends people into shock, but your body doesn't wait for help, it seals the wound like it's on autopilot. That didn't just happen by chance, you were built for it. Some people carry inherited mutations that speed up blood coagulation, the process your body uses to stop bleeding. In prehistoric times, that was crucial. Injuries came from animal attacks, sharp rocks, and brutal terrain. If you couldn't stop the bleeding fast, you didn't make it. These mutations affect everything from how your platelets behave to how tightly your blood vessels snap shut. It's like having a trauma response system running a few seconds ahead of schedule. Today, that same trait can be a mixed bag. Sure, it helps in emergencies, but it can also raise your risk of dangerous clots on long flights or during high stress. Still, in an apocalypse, it's elite. You take the hit and your body's already patching you up before the blood even touches the ground. And you wouldn't be alone. 
Millions of people, especially in Europe and the Middle East, carry these clot-fast genes, even if they've never heard of them. Mutation number four, efficient oxygen use. Imagine a world where the air is thin, not just at the top of a mountain, but everywhere. Underground bunkers, smoke-filled zones, and post-blast terrain. While others gasp for breath, you're moving like it's just another Tuesday. You didn't train for that, you inherited it. A specific gene called EPAS1 helps regulate how your body responds to low oxygen environments. And one rare version of it, originally found in Tibetan populations, gives people a massive edge in high altitude survival. It does this by reducing the production of red blood cells in hypoxic conditions, which may sound counterintuitive, but it actually prevents your blood from becoming too thick and sludgy. Translation, you stay clearer, faster, and more functional when oxygen is scarce. It's so efficient that researchers think this mutation may have originated from an ancient hominin group called the Denisovans. And today, only about 5 to 10% of the global population carries anything close to this adaptation. In the apocalypse, where you might be trapped in a collapsed tunnel or hiking into thin air to find supplies, this trait means you're not tapping out early. You're still thinking clearly, still moving. The air might be running out, but you? You're just getting started. And good thing too, because things aren't warming up from here. Mutation number three, cold adaptation. Everyone else is shivering in the bunker, huddled around a dented soup can and a candle stub, and you're out gathering firewood in a t-shirt. Not because you're showing off, but because your body just handles cold differently. This ability comes from mutations in a gene called UCP1, a key player in how your body generates heat. Instead of relying solely on muscle shivering, UCP1 activates brown fat, a special tissue that burns energy to create warmth. It's like having a built-in furnace, minus the electricity bill. This trait was incredibly useful for ancient humans living in sub-zero environments, and while modern heating has made it less essential, it hasn't disappeared. People with roots in cold regions like Northern Europe or Siberia are more likely to carry it. So if you've always tolerated winter better than your friends, or find cold showers weirdly refreshing, your DNA might be running a polar survival program in the background. In an apocalypse scenario like a nuclear winter, ice age resurgence, or climate chaos, this could be the edge that keeps you alive when everyone else is failing. No frostbite, no panic, and no slowing down. Mutation number two, super memory. In a world gone dark, maps don't help. Phones are dead, and landmarks have changed. But you, you remember everything. People with hyperthymesia, or highly superior autobiographical memory, can recall events from their past in incredible detail. Not just the big moments, but the weather, what they wore, and what day of the week it was. And while true hyperthymesia is extremely rare, researchers suspect more common genetic variants may boost memory functions in smaller but still significant ways. Several genes have been associated with enhanced memory and information recall, especially those involved in synaptic plasticity, the process that helps neurons strengthen their connections. Think of it like your brain leaving breadcrumbs wherever it goes, just in case you need to find your way back. In an apocalypse, this kind of recall is gold. You'd remember which streets were safe, where supplies were hidden, what warnings people gave, and what worked last time. You'd become the unofficial database for your whole group. No notebook needed. And sure, it might mean you also remember every awkward thing you've ever said. But when survival depends on details, that kind of brain power becomes a weapon. All right, only one more mutation left, and this one might just outlast them all. Mutation number one, low basal metabolic rate. Everyone else is weak, dizzy, and snapping at each other over the last can of beans. While everyone else is crashing from hunger, you're calmly figuring out the next move. While it looks like discipline, it's actually your engine running on low. Some people carry genetic variants that reduce basal metabolic rate, the amount of energy your body burns just to stay alive. This means they burn fewer calories at rest, preserve fat longer, and survive with less fuel. It's not exactly flashy, but in a world without supermarkets, it's kind of a cheat code. Scientists believe this trait evolved as a survival mechanism in populations that experienced famine or extreme scarcity. Genes like leper and UCP2 have been studied for their roles in regulating metabolism and conserving energy. The result? A body that doesn't panic when food runs low. It just slows down and waits it out. In a world gone sideways, that gives you the edge. You're not the fastest or the strongest. But when the chaos settles and the supplies run out, you're still standing, still thinking, and still moving. Survival of the fittest? That's the headline. But the real story is endurance. 
We explain a lot around here. Subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next.